Hi, this is Mr. Petito, and welcome to the 2021 WAMS Tech Orientation. So today we're going to go through setting up your device and making sure you're all ready to go for the start of the school year. I am the Innovation and Technology Specialist here at Woodward Academy Middle School. You can find me in Office 201, and my job is to make sure that you are successful in terms of technology here at the middle school. So if you need any assistance in setting up your device, troubleshooting your iPad, working on a digital project, turning something in digitally, things of that nature, come and see me and I'll be happy to help you out. Today's tasks, we're going to uh, set up a couple of things on your iPad. We're gonna showcase a couple of apps and then talk about some best practices and expectations for your device. The first thing that we have to do is rename your iPad. So head over to the settings app and you should land at the general menu on the left-hand side here. Then choose about and then choose name at the very top. And your iPad is probably named something similar to Johnny's iPad or just iPad. And we need to rename that with your last name, comma, space, first name, space, full graduation year. So for example, uh, if my name was John Smith, it'd be Smith, comma, space, John, space, and then my graduation year. If you are in eighth grade, this will be 2025. If you're in seventh grade, this will be 2026. Uh, for your first name, make sure that you make it your preferred name. This is the name that's labeled on your iPad bag and on your iPad stylus. This is how you registered with Woodward and the name that we know you by. So mine would be, for example, Petito, comma, space, Robert, space, and then my graduation year, 2026, let's say. All right. Once you've entered that in, hit return, and you should see that it's now saved as the name of the device. All right. Next, we are going to set your passcode. So while we're here in the settings menu, scroll down on the left-hand side, choose touch ID and passcode, and we are going to uh, turn passcode on. So about halfway down, select turn passcode on and you're gonna set your passcode to be your six digit birthday, where you have the month, then the day, and then the year, where the month is two digits, for example, 01 for January, all the way to 12 for December, then two digits for the day, for example, 01 if I was born on the 1st of January, to 31 if I was born on the 31st of October, let's say, and then your two digit year, for, so for you, it might be a 06 or 07, possibly even 08, something like that. Okay. So some examples here would be like June 30th of 2005. That was my birthday. Then it'd be 063005. If I was born on October 1st, that'd be 100106. So your six-digit birthday. I was born August 8th of 83, so mine would be 080883. You'll pop it in again, 080883 for me. Okay, whatever your birthday is, choose it for you. And that is now the passcode of your device. Now, if you forget your passcode, I have the ability to clear it for you remotely. Just send me an email, and I'd be happy to do that for you. If you wanna set up Touch ID with using your fingerprint, feel free to do so. Don't take class time to do that, set it up at home. Next, we are going to set up your Google account. So we're gonna hit the home button to go back to our home screen. And then you're gonna find the Safari app. The Safari app is down in the dock. It's that blue one, it looks like a compass. Okay, and you're gonna head to google.com. You see I'm already signed in, so I'm gonna sign out just so I can walk you through this. So you should now see a blue sign in button in the top right hand corner. You would just select sign in, and you're gonna sign in with your Woodward Google account. This is the same as your email address. I emailed all that information out to you at the end of June, and again, you can find that information in your inbox on your iPad. The schema is your two-digit graduation year. So again, for uh, eighth graders, that's 25. For seventh graders, that's 26. Followed by the first initial of your preferred name. Again, that's what's on the label of your device. Followed by your last name at woodward.edu. So you see in this example here, this is 20 J Doe for John Doe, let's say, at woodward.edu. If I were a seventh grader, mine would be 26 R Petito at woodward.edu. Okay, so you'll select that, and then you're gonna enter in your password. Your password is your five-digit ID number, followed by all lowercase W-A-M-S, which stands for Woodward Academy Middle School. After entering the information, you should now be signed in 
to Google. I'm gonna go ahead and enter my password down. No peeking. And now I see that my sign in button was replaced with my logo. Uh, feel free to change your avatar if you'd like. You can just select your avatar and you can change the picture of your avatar by selecting something from your photo library or by taking a picture on the fly. All right, next is this My Wham's Info app. This has already been installed on your device for you. So if you look at the My Wham's Info button here, right after signing in, again, you'll sign in with Google. And because we just signed in to Google in Safari, we won't have to re-enter our password. All we have to do is just select our name and it'll log us right into the My Wham's account. Upon signing into the app, if you have not yet taken care of your back to school information, make sure you go ahead and do so in the back to school tab. You need to view the handbook and then sign the handbook with a parent. Okay, we're gonna agree, date, sue sign, parent sign, and then the iPad insurance form needs to be filled out with a parent as well. Once you've done both of those things, after a while, these will turn complete, and then this back to school tab will vanish, and you'll be left with your My Profile tab. All right, next is self service. Again, self service is our version of the App Store. The Apple App Store does not exist on your iPad. So to download apps, simply select self service, find the apps you wish to install. You'll hit install. That easy, right? If you want a description of what the app is, you can select it and read more about it. Okay, at the bottom, you see that there are a few tabs available for you. The Home tab will show you a list of all of the apps that are available, and you can filter those apps by category using the menu on the left-hand side. The Middle tab shows notifications. Every once in a while, I'll push out notifications to your device as an alert, possibly um, a permission to let you install the latest version of iOS, or maybe it's a, hey, don't forget to fill out this kind of form, that kind of thing. Okay, and the three apps that we want you to install right away are Notability, Google Drive, and Google Docs. These are probably gonna be the top three apps you're using here at Woodward, in addition to the ones that have already been installed on your device. Once you install Google Drive and Google Docs, when you go to sign in for the first time, it's gonna prompt you to sign in with your Woodward Google account. Use that same information that you use to sign in to Safari. Let me talk a little bit about the Logitech case and the CRAN. So you see here that we our Logitech case comes with a keyboard already attached to it. It's a spill-proof keyboard as well, which is nice. It's got a kickstand on the back, as well as a holder for your Apple Pen. Underneath the kickstand, you should see a label with your name. That label also exists on the Logitech CRAN itself. Uh, the Logitech CRAN has the exact same technology inside as the Apple Pen, for half the price, which is nice. It's also flat, so it lays on your desk without rolling off. It does have a power button as well, which lets you save the battery. So when you power it on, you should see the light fade in, which means it's now on, then the light turns off. So even though this is on, don't expect the light to stay on, again, to save battery. And when you're ready to turn the device off, you simply just push the power button, you'll see the indicator light fade out, and that means that the device is now if you need to charge your Logitech CRAN, simply pop open the cap and plug your lightning cable directly into here, and it gets a really fast charge. Uh, the Logitech CRAN charges in about 10 minutes from zero to 100%, uh, unlike your iPad. Your iPad takes about five to six hours to charge from zero to 100%. So make sure that you are charging your iPad nightly to be ready for the school day the next day. If you forget to charge your device, I do have a charging station in my office. You can drop off your iPad, charge it, and pick it back up again halfway throughout the school day. If you need a device in the meantime, I do have a few loaners available, first come, first serve. Some other important reminders here is that your iPad comes with a black carrying bag. Make sure that you're always carrying your iPad in that bag. You should never carry it loosely or on top of your books or under your arm or something like that. It should always be transported in that bag. Likewise, that bag should never be stuffed inside of another bag. It does have a shoulder strap in it. Feel free to connect the shoulder strap and wear it around your shoulder. In addition to a backpack. I'd say the majority of cracks that happened to the iPad over the past couple of years has been because students have tried pushing their iPad in the black bag into their backpack as well, so that way they only have one thing to carry, but all that pressure from their textbooks and binders and so forth will just crush the screen, regardless if there's a case on it.
or not. So always carry your black bag separately from your backpack. Also, never leave your iPad unattended, whether that's in the hallways or outside of a classroom. If you need to drop your iPad off someplace and then go someplace else, make sure you're always dropping off your iPad inside of a classroom, never outside in the hallway where it can get stolen or trampled on. Uh, if you are taking the MARTA or a bus, make sure you're not um, leaving it unattended as well. Wear it at all times or have it under your feet. If you're on the MARTA, I recommend wearing that shoulder strap as well to prevent someone from just running by and snatching it and taking off. It has happened. Uh, note, your iPad is like a toothbrush, and especially nowadays, we shouldn't be sharing anything. So especially, do not share your iPad. This one's meant for you. Do not share it with your parents or your siblings or things of that nature. Now, your parents still have control over you at home, so if they ask for your iPad at home, you have to give it up, okay? But um, do not let them use it for their own personal reasons. Do not let your siblings use it for their own personal reasons. Uh, or your friends, okay? Your friends have their own iPads if they're here at the middle school as well. Again, charge your iPad nightly. It's best to find a dedicated charging spot to build as part of your routine, right? You get home from school, you have a snack, you do your homework, you plug in your iPad and you leave it there for the rest of the night, knowing that it's going to be there when you wake up in the morning. Okay? Um, the keyboard. Do not put any stickers on the keyboard or on the back of the, of, the, of the case. Do not mark on the keyboard with highlighters or markers or pen of that nature. There will be a cleaning fee at the end of the year if we see such. Um, a lot of that is really hard to get off, especially because these are spill-proof. They're not meant to be dirty, right? So if you physically make it dirty on purpose, it'll be hard to get off. So don't scratch it or etch it or things of that nature. The one exception would be if you want to mark your iPad with a sticky label with your name on it, like a, a tag or a label of some kind with your name on it, that would be acceptable, but any other instance is not. Uh, lastly, your iPad is being monitored and usage is being logged. I'm going to give you a peek behind the scenes here real fast. So this is Relay. This is our web filter here. And um, if I were to give this a refresh, you'd see these numbers change in real time. I can see exactly how many users are on at any given point, what websites they visited, what websites have been blocked in a given day, what videos have been watched, the top blocks, top searches, um, top websites that have been accessed so far. Um, I can make, generate reports, okay, and I can scan it from one day all the way back to uh, you know months in the, in the past. So everything is being monitored. Now I'm not sitting in front of my screen just staring at this screen trying to catch you and doing something bad, right? But uh, this system will notify me when certain activity happens, right? So if you're using your iPad inappropriately, I will be notified and that information will be sent to your parents, to your counselors, and to the administration. So make sure you're using your iPad for school-related purposes only. And if you want to use it uh, for personal reasons, use a personal device. Use your phone, your personal iPad, your personal laptop, that kind of thing. But leave this iPad for school-related purposes only. All right, the Eagle Tech Center, this is our on-campus help desk. It's located right across the street. So right this building behind this graphic here is Richardson. This is the greenhouse. The lower school will be over here somewhere, right? This is the basketball courts. So it's right across the basketball courts, right across the street between the greenhouse and Richardson. Um, there might be times where I send you down there in case I can't fix your iPad. I should always be the first stop in case something's wrong. Um, I might send you down there and just to let you know that the building does exist and I will show you this map as well in case I ever need to send you down there. All right, so over the weekend, some last steps here. Update your iPad. If you head to um, settings, you'll, you might see that you have a um, update waiting for you. So if I go to settings and then general, software update, the latest version is 13.6. So go ahead and grab that update. Uh, if and when iOS 14 comes out, hold off because usually the very first iteration of a new iOS comes with bugs that might conflict with some of our systems. So it's best to wait for the go-ahead from me to install that next version of the iOS. But any version of 13 is fine at this point. Uh, check your email. So this email has already been set up on your device. You can access the mail app at the bottom or you can go to google.com and sign into Gmail, right, with your Google account. It's the same messages. And read any messages from me, right? 
uh, read any messages from your uh, ebooks if that you ordered. Try setting up your ebooks. The documentation to set up your ebooks is at the Back to School website on woodward.edu. Uh, on that site, I have a document that shows you step by step how to get your ebook from this email to your bookshelf app. Uh, there's a video in there as well, so you can follow that along step by step. Uh, try exploring PowerSchool Learning. Try installing some more apps from Self Service. Try using your Logitech Cran and the Notes app or the Notability app. Show your parents what you've done so far today. Show them your iPad. Show them the MyWAMS Info app, especially if they need to sign something or fill out the insurance form. Okay, and uh, that, yeah, just explore it. If you want to change your wallpaper, as long as it's school appropriate, uh, it shouldn't be political, it shouldn't be um, suggestive, it shouldn't be inappropriate or violent of any kind. A nice pattern or an image would suit you just fine, or a photo of you and your friends, that's okay too. It also helps with identification of the device in case they get mixed up. So uh, wallpapers are fine. Feel free to customize your iPad a little bit if you want to switch it from light mode to dark mode and things of that nature by all means. All right. Uh, so that being said, if you need any assistance, I'm in room 201, which is on the second floor, all the way on the left-hand side of the building, um, or the right-hand side, I guess it depends on what stairway you come up. Okay, but 201, and that's my email address you see right there, robert.petito at woodward.edu. If you have any questions, my door is always open, unless I'm recording just like this. And as always, thanks for watching.